here in this video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate how HSRP protocol works in production network. But in order to understand that, we must need to understand how HSRP protocol works. So in this video, I'm not going to be able to show you how to configure HSRP. So I would suggest to see this video first and understand how, how standby routing protocol works. And if you want, you can see the track IP, but that's a different thing. It has nothing to do with HSRP. So this is the video guys. We need two gateways for the HSRP configuration. One would be the virtual gateway and then the actual gateway for individual VLANs. Like here we are saying a standby one. One is the group number and IP is 10.10.10.254. This is our virtual gateway. So again, please watch my video about how to configure HSRP to understand why we need two gateways for HSRP. So here in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how HSRP actually tracked and how we understand that hsrp is functional and working so here is a quick peek of our configuration this is the hsrp configuration for this lab if you notice 10 and 20 is primary here in the switch one 30 and 40 is secondary here same way 30 and 40 is primary in the secondary switch and 10 20 is the secondary if you notice here here in this configuration everywhere there is 20, 20, 20, 254. So everywhere there is 254. So the virtual gateway is common in all VLANs in both switches here and here. You need to watch this video or any other video about HSRP, how the virtual gateway works. Otherwise, this video will not make any sense for you. VLAN 10 will go to the core switch one by default. Once that switch is failed by any chance, if there is any single point of failure, if the link is broken, then it will be routed to the core switch two. And here is our VLAN configuration. In core switch 1 for VLAN 10, we have 10, 10, 10, 1. In core switch 2 for VLAN 10, it is 10, 10, 10, 2. So if that gateway, which is 10.1, is failed by any chance, then traffic from VLAN 10 will be routed to the core switch 2. 10.2 will be the gateway, and that would come in the trace route. So the virtual IP that we configured in both switches in core switch 1, 10, 10, 10, 254, here as well, 10, 10, 10, 254, is not going to be traceable anywhere in the trace route because this is untraceable and hidden if you see this video in my channel then you will have a good understanding how that hsrp works and here is another quick picture of all the static route from the asa v1 to all the vlans so we have four vlans here 10 20 30 40 and they all are configured in both core switch 1 and core switch 2 as i showed you before this is the vlan configurations in core switch 1 and core switch 2 you can take a quick peek and here is the static route from the asav towards all the vlan we already talked about this land that in this configuration there is failover configured active standby in this fabric and asav1 is the primary whatever input i will give it to asav1 the secondary unit will be automatically synchronize from this failure link so if you carefully notice here from the sav towards each vlan we have two entries pointing to 13.1 and 14.1 by the way they both are in the same subnet if you see the bigger picture 10 10 10 1 13 10 10 10 1 14 and this is the same subnet 8 to 15 is the ip block so why am i giving two a static route pointing to the same vlan because if 10 1 10 13 goes down we still have 10.14 as the standby. We have one as the administrative cost manually embedded everywhere. So we know that already for any static route, a route or switch or ASA will consider one as their administrative distance. So I'm adding one for every entry so that the ASA will keep all these entries in its routing table and choose the best one from its routing algorithm as needed. That means if one goes down, it will go to the other one. So this route are already been given to the ASA V. If you notice here for VLAN 10, we have two entries 10.14 and 10.13 and they all have one as their administrative cost. Here is 10, two entries, 20, two entries, 30, we have two entries, 40, we have the same two entries, 13 and 40. By the way, the ASA in this lab has already pre-configured with object network, access group, access list and net and pat. In order to understand this, how VLAN will be routed to the internet, you must watch this video uploaded in my account. If you have any question, you're most welcome to leave any command. So let's do a ping test from this VLAN 10 PC that is connected to access switch one and then core switch one. If you notice, we can go to the internet 192.168.1.1. That is my physical network connected here. So this VLAN PC can go to the internet. Now let us understand how HSRP is working. If I do a trace route, if you notice, 10 10 10 1 is in its trace table that means this pc is going to this core switch one first right because during the hsrp configuration 
we said to code switch 1 that the priority for VLAN 10 in code switch 1 is 110. The reason why this VLAN 10 route is coming to this switch first. But by any chance, if that switch goes down, it will route here. Let us test that. So as of now, first gateway is 10, 10, 10, 1. Let's turn this switch off. Let's do another ping test. We can still go to the internet, which is the ISP here. But let's trace this time. If you notice, this time the gateway is changed. This one, the code switch 2 became the gateway because during the HSRP configuration in code switch 2, we mentioned for VLAN 10, your priority value is 100. So you are the secondary. If that one failed by any chance, you will be responsible for VLAN 10 routing. That's what exactly this switch doing. But watch carefully here. I'm in code switch 2. The code switch 1 is down. If you notice here, just before we turn that switch down, VLAN 10, group 1, steady speak and standby. So the code switch 2 was in standby mode. But soon after I turned this switch down, VLAN 10 again stayed to standby and then it became active. So HSRP is fully functional. To test it further, if we type show standby brief, if you notice priority is 100, look at the state. State is active. And P stands for preempt. So that means if that switch comes back to the production network again since it was 100 so that will go back to the secondary mode again and the core switch 1 will be active again let us test it and keep watching this notice this is the ether channel is getting up but i'm waiting for that hsrp syntax see now hsrp state changed vlan 10 group 1 state active speak it's learning there you go here it becomes standby so if i type the same command show standby brief now see the state standby if i go to switch 1 Enable show standby brief. Notice preemption is enable, priority is 110. That's why it's active. State active here, state standby. If I do the trace route again from this VLAN PC, 10, 10, 10, 1 is the next hop which is in the trace route. But remember one thing the 10, 10, 10, 254, which we have configured in both places, is never going to be traceable. This is a virtual gateway that is untraceable and hidden. By the way, one interesting thing that I need to show you. If you notice here, these client PCs are actually getting IPs from the DHCP server. I wanted to show you at least for one scoop how I have configured the VLAN scoop here because that is very important. So this is the DHCP server, which is this one that is connected to our core switch 2. That means if core switch 2 goes down, this client's PC will no longer have any DHCP IP. So in order to resolve this, we need to configure another DHCP server here connecting to the another switch which is core switch one in this case and configure as secondary so if that switch goes down by any chance this client pieces in production network they will still get the IPs from the secondary DHCP server but let's focus on the DHCP scoop if I go to the DHCP so this is the DHCP server IPv4 this is our VLAN 10 if I click here VLAN 10 scope and then scope option if you notice here on the router's gateway 10 10 10 254 i have not given any gateway like 10 10 10 1 which is configured in this switch one or 10 10 10 2 which is configured as vlan 10 in switch 2 for each vlan i have used the virtual gateway as their gateway so for each vlan like 10 20 30 40 i have used the virtual gateway the dot 254 as their gateway so that if any switch goes down by the hsrp and the priority value if the primary switch is down it goes to the secondary switch without any packet loss thank you if you have any questions please leave your comments below